system that in a reusable launch system is a launch system that includes the recovery of some or all of the component stages. To date, several fully reusable suborbital systems and partially reusable orbital systems have been flown. The first reusable launch vehicle to reach orbit was the Space Shuttle, which was not able to accomplish the intended goal of reducing launch costs to below those of expendable launch systems. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk, said if one can figure out how to reuse rockets like airplanes, the cost of access to space will be reduced by as much as a factor of 101. During the 21st century, commercial interest in reusable launch systems has grown considerably, with several active launchers. The SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket has a reusable first stage and capsule, four Dragon flights, and expendable second stage, the spaceship company has flown reusable suborbital space planes, and the suborbital Blue Origin New Shepard rocket has recoverable first stages and crew capsules. Content. Falcon Heavy is configured for One flight. Vehicle hey, minus 15, stand by for terminal count. 1.1 1. Right, 1 landing. Final. 1.2 reuse hardware slash landing propellant. 1.3 reentry heat shielding. 2 history. 2.1 20th century. 2.2 21st century. 3 list of active reusable launch systems. 4 see also. 5 references. 6 bibliography. 7 external links. Vehicle configurations. The single stage to orbit. SSTO approach has yet to be proven viable, while several partially reusable two-stage to orbit vehicles are active or in an advanced stage of development. Expendable rockets air launched from aircraft can be considered partially reusable if the aircraft is thought of as the first stage of the launch vehicle. Considered partially reusable if the aircraft is thought of as the first stage of the launch vehicle. An example of this configuration is the Northrop Grumman Pegasus. The spaceship company combination of Spaceship 2 and White Knight 2 is a fully reusable suborbital vehicle with wings on both the launch aircraft and the rocket-propelled second stage. Non-rocket space launch systems provide a theoretical increase in efficiency too. Landing Vehicles that land horizontally on a runway require wings and undercarriage. These typically consume about 9-12% to of the landing vehicle mass, which either reduces the payload or increases the size of the vehicle. Concepts such as lifting bodies offer some reduction in wing mass, as does the delta wing shape of the space shuttle. Vertical landings can be accomplished either with parachutes, as with Soyuz, or propulsively. The DCX is an example of a propulsive lander 3 and the Falcon 9 rocket is the first orbital rocket to vertically land its first stage on the ground. This typically requires about 10% of the total first stage propellant, reducing the payload that can be carried due to the rocket equation 4. Reuse hardware slash landing propellant. Reusable stages weigh more than equivalent expendable stages. This is unavoidable due to the supplementary systems and slash or surplus propellant needed to land a stage. The actual mass penalty depends on the vehicle and the return mode chosen 5. Reentry heat shielding. Main article, atmospheric entry. As a rough rule of thumb, 15% of the landed weight of an atmospheric reentry vehicle needs to be heat shielding 6. Thermal protection systems, TPS, can be made of a variety of materials, including reinforced carbon carbon and ablative materials 7. Historically these materials were first developed on ICBM MIRVs. However, the requirements of reusable space systems differ from those of single-use re-entry vehicles, especially with regards to heat shield requirements. In particular the need for durable high emissivity coatings that can withstand multiple thermal cycles constitutes a key requirement in the development of new reusable spacecraft. Current materials for such high emissivity coatings include transition metal disilicides 8. History with the invention of rocket propulsion in the first half of the 20th century, space travel became a technical possibility. Early ideas of a single-stage reusable space plane proved unrealistic and although even the first practical rocket vehicles, V2, could reach the fringes of space, reusable technology was too heavy. In addition many early rockets were developed to deliver weapons, making reuse impossibly by design. 
The problem of mass efficiency was overcome by using multiple expendable stages in a vertical launch multistage rocket. The first reusable stages did not appear until the advent of the US Space Shuttle in 1981. Modern reusable orbital vehicles include the X-37 and the Dream Chaser. 20th Century McDonnell Douglas DCX used vertical takeoff and vertical landing. NASA started the Space Shuttle design process in the late 1960s, with the vision of creating a fully reusable space plane using a crewed flyback booster for the 1970s. This design proved too expensive and complex to develop in time, therefore the design was scaled back to use reusable solid rocket boosters and an expendable external tank 910 the shuttle proved much more expensive to operate over its lifetime 1981 to 2011 than an expendable launch system would have been in 1986 president ronald reagan called for an air breathing scramjet national aerospace plane nasp slash x30 the project failed due to severe technical issues and was cancelled in 1993-11. In the 1990s the McDonnell Douglas Delta Clipper VTOLSSTO proposal progressed to the testing phase. The DCX prototype demonstrated rapid turnaround time and automatic computer control. In mid-1990, British research evolved an earlier Hotal design into the far more promising Skylon design, which remains in development. From the commercial side, rocket plane Kistler and Rotary Rocket attempted to build reusable privately developed rockets before going bankrupt. NASA proposed risky reusable concepts to replace the shuttle technology, to be demonstrated under the X-33 and X-34 programs, which were both cancelled in the early 2000s due to rising costs and technical issues and technical issues. Scaled Composites Spaceship One used horizontal landing after being launched from a carrier airplane. The Ansari X Prize contest was intended to develop private suborbital reusable vehicles. Many private companies competed, with the winner, Scaled Composites, reaching the Karman line twice in a two week period with their reusable Spaceship One, Ship One, and 12. SpaceX started a flight test program with experimental vehicles. vehicles. This subsequently led to the development of the Falcon 9 reusable rocket launcher 12. On November 23, 2015 the new Shepard rocket became the first vertical takeoff slash landing VTOL, suborbital rocket to reach space by passing the Karman line, 100 kilometers or 62 miles, reaching 329,839 feet 100,535 meters before returning to a parachute landing 13-3. SpaceX achieved the first vertical soft landing of a reusable orbital rocket stage on December 21, 2015, after helping send 11 Orbcomog 2 commercial satellites into low Earth orbit 14. The first Falcon 9 second flight occurred on 30 March 2017 15 SpaceX now routinely recovers and reuses their first stages, with the intent of reusing fairings as well 16. As of August 2019, the only operational reusable orbital class launch systems are the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. SpaceX is also developing the fully reusable Starship launch system 17. Falcon Heavy Side Boosters Landing During 2018 Demonstration Mission List of Active Reusable Launch Systems